Welcome to the VA Loan Masterclass, where we'll learn everything you need to know about the VA Loan. My name's Evan Kaufman, your VA Loan Originator. Stepping in today, we're gonna go over a few major objectives. Number one, we're gonna look at the history and highlights of the VA Loan. Then we're gonna look at common questions that we get asked all the time and answer those in simple yes or no format. Next, we're gonna go over VA Loan 101. These are the major terms and go into detail on them so you understand them when you're going out there to try to win a home. Then we'll be looking at a scenario where we compare the VA loan with a conventional loan to get an idea of what the numbers and some of the differences are between the two. Then we're gonna round it all out, knowing who qualifies for a VA loan, and then how to go out there and win a home with the VA loan. So first, changing over and look at the history and highlights of the VA loan. The VA loan is a product of World War II. So back in World War II, when all of our service members were coming back and needing to reintegrate back into the economy, Congress passed a very aptly named bill, and that was a Service Member Readjustment Act of 1944. The whole goal was to help service members readjust back into the economy. Now, it created a whole lot of programs, and the two big ones that still remain today, the GI Bill for military members when they want to use their education benefits, and the VA Home Loan Guarantee, otherwise we like to call the VA Home Loan that we're talking about today. So what exactly is the VA Loan? A lot of folks are a little confused on what it means. Well, the VA loan is part of the Veterans Administration. And what it means is that the VA, Veterans Administration, guarantees up to 25% of a veteran's loan so long as a lender meets certain requirements. Now, here's the deal from that. The VA actually doesn't fund a loan. And it's a big misconception when people say, hey, the VA denied me, the VA turned me down. It's not the VA that technically turns you down, it's individual lenders. The VA essentially says, hey, we're gonna guarantee up to 25% of this loan, and they're telling this to all the lenders, so long as you meet certain requirements. It's almost like it's an insurance policy. So if we're funding your loan, it's us who are making sure that you meet all the right requirements, and we're the ones deciding if you're gonna get the loan or not. And as long as we meet some of those requirements the VA gave us, they're saying, hey guys, we're essentially gonna provide like an insurance policy where if this person defaults, we're gonna cover up to 25% of any losses. So the big misconception that we get over right up front is that the VA doesn't actually fund loans. They really essentially issue an insurance policy to lenders such as us and others, that when we make you a loan as a veteran or an active duty member, they're willing to help guarantee part of it. So as we'll always talk about here in a little bit more, that makes a big difference on what lender you're working with because they're the ones really deciding. So if you were turned down, that doesn't necessarily mean you were actually turned down for a VA loan. That's why oftentimes it's really worthwhile to get a second opinion on if you really are not gonna meet VA standards or not. What does that all mean for you as the military member, as a veteran? What good does that really do me with that guarantee? Well, the thing is, is that because the VA is offering that 25% guarantee, one of the big benefits with the VA loan is that you can do 100% financing, or think about that inversely, is you can put 0% down and not be punished with any monthly insurance premiums. So think of it this way, if you do conventional loans and you put less than 20% down, you're typically gonna have private mortgage insurance, PMI. And that's an extra monthly penalty cost because you're putting less than 20% down. If you're going FHA, which sadly a lot of folks think FHA is the same as VA, it's not at all. If you go FHA route, you have mortgage insurance premium, MIP. That's a monthly penalty payment, just like PMI, that you get dinged on because you're putting less than 20% down. Now on FHA, you have that really no matter what, but the deal is on VA loans, you don't have that period. That's a tremendous benefit. And if you kind of wonder why is that? Well, the basic detail of that is, remember the VA is essentially giving you a 25% guarantee to the lender. So for us, it minimizes that risk. So for our sake, it's kind of like there's that extra security of if rather if you put down payment, we get that extra security from the VA's guarantee. So, okay, you can put less than 20% down and not get punished. Huge benefit. So you can do 100% financing slash put 0% down if you think about it, not get punished by private mortgage insurance or mortgage insurance premium. And then the last major benefit is that you should be getting more competitive interest rates on a VA loan than a conventional loan. Now, a lot of folks will come to me and go, well, Evan, all these other lenders told me they're the same or really close to the same. A lot of banks and a lot of institutions do charge about the same interest rate between the two. And that's because VA loans are a very small subset of loans. Only about one in every 10 loans is a VA loan. What does that mean from a lender's perspective? I gotta change my processes to handle these VA loans so it's a little more of a headache. So even if I'm making more money off of these loans, 
I'm gonna make sure I take that and offset some of the extra costs I have to go to rethink doing a VA loan. Because even though a VA loan's not harder to do for a lender, it is just slightly different. So they try to offset that. But if you're working with lenders who really get how to do VA loans, we understand that we do it all day long. 90% of our business, VA loans, a majority of that active duty military, PCS and around the country, we get it. And because we focus on that, it means that we get to pass through significantly better rates. And there's a lot of other lenders that do similar stuff, right? They focus heavily on military and VA veterans in general too, and make sure that you get good rates. So make sure you check around for that. But the key is you should see a difference between a VA loan interest rate and a conventional rate. There's some really small nuances where it might be different. We'll talk on that here in a little bit when we hit on the scenario question, comparing a VA and conventional loan, but you should see a more competitive rate with the VA loan. And that's one of the big benefits of utilizing a VA loan. Now, some of the common questions we get, we're gonna hit on these in simple yes, no format. And the deal is the VA loan, remember 1944 is when it first came around. It's changed over all the years. I mean, sweet goodness, now you look at it, we're at 80 years almost on a VA loan. That's pretty impressive. Over the years, it's been modified and for the most part, constantly enhanced to be improved. So some of these answers that we're gonna say yes to or no to for things, they would have been the opposite answer maybe a few years ago. So it's important to always update and cover those. So can I use a VA loan more than once? Yes, no doubt you can use a VA loan multiple times. And in fact, the question that follows on after that, the question that we often get after that is can I have multiple active VA loans? Yes, you can. We even have clients who have three and even four outstanding VA loans. What that means is you can own a home and think about this, active duty military, often what we work with. You own a home at one location, and now you're gonna PCS, make that move across country, and you wanna keep that home. Let's say you wanna keep it as a rental. You were living in it while you were there, now you're moving, you wanna keep it as a rental. You can go ahead and use a VA loan again on that next home and keep the old home. Two VA loans, outstanding at the same time. Pretty incredible. So yes, you can. Next question we get asked often, does the VA loan benefit expire? It does not expire. Does a VA loan have a size limit? The VA loan does not have any size limits, thanks to a big change back in 2020. Incredible, no size limit on a VA loan. Does a service-connected disability affect the VA home loan? Yes, it does. And we'll hit on that in a little bit of where that makes a major impact. Can I use my VA loan while on active duty? Most certainly, especially a lot of new guys out of basic training or they just commissioned like, hey, can I really use a VA loan? It's the Veterans Administration for veterans. And a lot of us, of course, when we're active duty, we're not thinking of ourselves as veterans. Hands down, you definitely can. It's one of the best wealth building tools while you're in the military as an active duty member. You just gotta be careful with it. That's why it's important to work with someone who understands it. Yes, you certainly can while active duty. Now, can a National Guard or a reserve service member utilize a VA loan? Yes, they can, especially those guard members. Some are like, hey, we're kind of state run and everything. Yes, you can use it. Now, a recap of some of those common questions that we have. We've got a nice form. If you're watching our slide version, you can see all those related questions. Just know that if you've heard things in the past about the VA loan that it could or couldn't do, you might just want to double check and make sure. Because as we discuss, a VA loan changes. Every year, there's some type of change with the VA loan. It's important to work with a lender who gets it. Now, let's go into some VA Loan 101. We hit the common questions. Yes, no, yes, no, a little bit of detail there. Now we're gonna get into the major terms of the VA loan and then explain them a little bit so you hopefully have a good understanding. This is the, these are the kind of things that we go over with our clients to just make sure they have a good awareness of when we're going through the process. And really, if you understand these, you're gonna have a good grasp on the VA loan as a whole. So first, let's look at the VA mandatory funding fee. So the VA charges a fee on every VA loan. And no matter who the lender is, this fee is charged. I've been asked sometimes, hey, what's your VA funding fee? This lender's telling me this. It's gonna be the same no matter what. It's based off of your certificate of eligibility, which we'll talk about here in a second, and what the VA is gonna charge you. So it's the same no matter what by every lender. Now, this is a fee that's paid directly to the VA at the time of closing. And there's three major ways that it's paid for. It's paid for at closing by the buyer, it's paid for at closing by the seller, or what we most commonly see, the third option, it's rolled into the loan. And that's where you don't technically have to pay it right up front, it's just rolled into the loan balance and on you go. Now you might be asking, how much is that VA funding fee? And do I have to pay it in every scenario? Well, you always have to pay what the VA is saying that it is. And here's the deal. When we remember when we talked back on our questions, yes, no, 
service-connected disability. What difference does it make? So right up front, we'll say that if you have a service-connected disability, which the VA estimates that about half of all veterans have 10% or greater disability, then you get that funding fee waived, gone, out the window. So it's very important that if you have a service-connected disability, you make sure your lender knows and understands that. We should see it when we pull our certificate eligibility anyways, if we work a lot with the VA, but even then you wanna make sure it's taken care of. So there's a way to know if you got a lender that gets it, are they asking you, hey, Johnny, do you have at least 10% or greater service connected disability? Do you have any VA disability compensation? Those are things you want to be hearing because then you know that they're trying to find out, can we get that funding fee waived and gone entirely? Because this funding fee is a pretty decent cost. Here's the deal. This goes to help make sure the program keeps running. This essentially helps make sure that you can have no private mortgage insurance or mortgage insurance premium. So you can do the 0% down. And that charge, if it's your first use of the VA loan and you have no VA disability compensation, that charge now is 2.15%. Now, if you're gonna go use a VA loan anytime after that first use, it pops up to 3.3% if you're putting 0% down. Now here's the deal and a big reason, honestly, why I got into the mortgage business to help our active duty members and veterans do the VA loan, because I was there myself. And honestly, I had thought, man, you can't put money down on a VA loan. It must be 0% only, because it's always told you 0% down, 0% down, no money down. In reality, you can put money down on a VA loan. In fact, I always recommend, hey, if you can, there are some benefits to that. The big benefit is if you can put at least 5% down on a VA loan, then that pulls that funding fee down and it pulls it back on, if you put between five and 10% down, it pulls it down to 1.5%. So if it's your first use, you get a little bit of savings there. You go from 2.15 to 1.5, but if it's any use thereafter, they call it subsequent use, that's the term, then you pull that funding fee back from 3.3% to 1.5%. As I like to say, you put 5% down, you get almost an instant 40% savings. Not quite, you know, it's like 36, 37%, but you make a major savings one time right out the gate by putting 5% down. And in the scenarios that I've personally run to try to build wealth throughout my time when I was in the military, putting that 5% down after your first use at a minimum. So if you can't do your first round, okay, I get it. You don't have the money necessarily to do it the first round, great. But by the time you're doing that second, third, fourth PCS and purchase in your career, well, in the military, or even if you're a veteran, civilian outside moving around, great. You gotta get to that point where you can put some of that down to reduce that funding fee. So you put 5% down, it pulls back to 1.5%. And if you put down 10% or greater on a VA loan, it actually pulls it down a little bit more to 1.25. The only way to pull it back anymore is to have that exemption. So one little nugget I wanna throw in there to think about, especially if you're active duty, is if you're getting out of the military, think ahead. You can apply to have a VA funding fee waived before getting out of the military. Pretty incredible. A lot of lenders might tell you no, but there's a way of doing that. The key is you have already filed your claim, you work with your lender, we can file the right forms to try to get an early notice from the VA if we can get that funding fee waived. It's incredible. We've helped folks save thousands of dollars while they're going on their terminal leave or transition leave before getting out of the military. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Heck, remember Evan Kaufman, he, he can help me make that one happen. We can make it so that you can get that funding fee waived even before technically separating or retiring. Very important just to keep in the back of your mind. So that's a VA mandatory funding fee. Know that it's there, know that it's gonna be the same no matter what lender you work with. And the one way to eliminate is to get VA disability compensation. So pay attention to that when you're getting out or if you're already out to make sure you take care of those claims. Now, next major 101 term to understand, certificate of eligibility. You might hear this as COE. This is what we as a lender get from the VA and we go, okay, hey, it has on there usually one nice simple sheet that shows if you have any outstanding VA loans, it helps tell us if you're exempt or not exempt. And if you haven't been receiving compensation, we usually have some kind of notice on there. And just the terms we need to know on how to execute this VA loan and if you have eligibility or not. Now, the thing is, those COE sometimes aren't always correct. So that's why we wanna have a lender that's asking you the right questions and then verifying in the COE. If it's different, you need to start working those through. And here's the other deal. If you're getting told, hey, go get your COE, that should be a red flag. For lenders that work often with VA loans, we have a direct access to be able to pull it from the portal, no cost to our buyers. You tell me, we get it pulled within a minute on knowing, hey, what does your certificate of eligibility look like? Or do we need to take any steps to make sure that we get it? You should have someone that's working for you as a lender that can pull that and get that for you without you having to go wait in line or deal on the telephone or just figuring out online how to pull it up. 
So know that lenders can get it very easily. It's just, do they know how to is the question. It's the most important document in that it gives us all that information. And here's the thing. If you're buying a home, you want to make sure that's looked at during the pre-approval process. You don't want that getting looked at when you're under contract. You want to know beforehand. I used to be on the real estate agent side, helping active duty member families buy and sell when I was back in Dayton, Ohio. So everyone was moving in and out. And I was the guy helping a lot of them, a lot of active duty folks. One of the biggest pain points was when we had a lender who ultimately didn't pull that COE or check it until we were under contract and that jeopardized the entire deal. So you want to have that looked at up front at the pre-approval process so that you know, hey, I am truly eligible. Or even if I think I'm eligible or know I'm eligible, but there's some blemish, some issue on that COE, you have time to get it fixed. So make sure you pay attention. That should be getting asked in the beginning. What's your COE look like? And you want to ask that question, is my COE clear? Now, next major thing to go over, VA home inspections. This is one, especially if you're working with real estate agents or you are a real estate agent who've been dealing with the VA loan years ago, there are always some issues in what the VA requires for inspection, doesn't require inspection, how does that all work? Now, the VA loan is a little unique in that it has a appraisal process that now here we're in the year of 2023, there was now issued Congress to try to change via appraisal. So maybe here in the next year or two, we'll have some changes on it. But right now the appraisal is a little unique in that it has a habitability check where they need to check certain parts of the home, but it is not an inspection whatsoever. So third party inspection is something you definitely need to have. And it is the appraisal for a VA loan is not a substitute for home inspections. However, the VA loan does require a couple of actual inspections separate from the regular appraisal and from third party ones, which you can do or not do on your own. Then those things are pretty simple. Most states are requiring some kind of WDO, wood destroying organism, or what a lot of people like to say, termite inspections. So you want to make sure you get that checked on. Now, big change was made. And that change is that now that can be paid for the termite inspection or really any of these other inspections, there's some water well inspections and stuff on VA loans that need to be done if you have them. Those can be paid by either party. It used to be that sellers had to pay it. And that was a pain point, especially when the market was really hot and there's a lot of offers on homes and sellers were looking at an offer. And it's like, well, this guy's having me pay for these inspections and this one isn't, they're going to go with the rate, the other loan that doesn't require it. Well, the VA removed that, which is great. So now the buyer, the seller, heck the agent lender, they can take care of those costs for you. So know that that's something that if you don't work often with VA loans, people might assume that. So it's important to make sure that the listing agent, if you're a buyer, it's important to make sure that listing agents understand that if you're selling your home, just know that you don't actually have to pay that cost. They can pay that or anyone can really take care of it to help make sure that the veteran wins the home. That's a big one though, right? The pest inspections, which is the termite wood destroying organisms. If you have a water well, just know that if it's a primary source of water, like you're drinking off of the well, that's something that's gotta be inspected as well. If it's irrigation, that's a different story. But know that, hey, if there's water involved in the home, it's not on city water, there could be something there. Those are really the two major things. Now, if you have your regular third home inspection and there's some regular random requirements that you guys come to an agreement on fix and change that could change some of the needs from a VA underwriter, the person looking over all the documents that you present for the offer. So just know that there could be some other stipulations, but the main thing is wood destroying organisms, WDO slash termite. That's the term. And then if you're getting a place that has its own well, not city water and stuff, which is what most homes are, then you might need an inspection in that scenario too which honestly, probably gonna want that inspection anyways. Now, mandatory occupancy period. This is really big for folks, especially for active duty people who are moving around. What are the requirements on when they need to be in that home? So first and foremost up front, the VA loan has to be used for primary residence purchases. And we'll talk on that here in a second, or what type of properties is the VA loan good for. But the deal is someone's gotta move into that home within 60 days of closing. Now, a lot of people assume that means that the veteran has to move into the home. And that's what a lot of lenders assume it means. So big thing that we'll see there is like, if you're deployed overseas and you're coming back and trying to buy a place and line it up, somebody's like, hey, they told I couldn't buy it because I'm 90 days from getting to the house. Well, is it 90 days for you? But here's a key deal, your spouse, if you're married, they can be the ones that occupy as well. So if you're buying it from overseas and you're not gonna be there because you're still on deployment for a bit, if your spouse moves in there within that 60 day period, you're good. Just something to be aware of. Now, the other thing is too, how long do I have to live in the home as a VA loan? 
one year. That is the expectation before renting or selling the home. Now there are what we call VA changes in circumstance and they're valid changes in circumstances. Big ones right up front, deployment. You got short order PCSs. There's a big life change. You have a job change. Those are things that the VA recognizes, hey, that life happens. You don't necessarily have to hit that one year requirement that the VA requests. So that's something that's really important to understand. One year is a requirement, but there is some flexibility there based on valid changes in circumstances. So those are mandatory occupancy periods. Know that there's just some requirements there, but it's a little more flexible than what a lot of people assume. Now, next major term to understand, VA loan property types. What are the types of properties you can purchase with a VA loan? The major thing is that it's a primary residence. What does a primary residence consist of? That can be a single family home, that can be a condo, that can be a town home, that can be multi-unit property. So we're gonna say here in a sec, you can't buy investment properties, but you can buy a duplex, triplex, quad. As long as you're living in one of those units, you can rent the others out and that's good because it's technically your primary residence and you just happen to have a couple rental units attached to it. A primary residence is one, two, three, or four unit property. Mobile manufactured homes, another one that people assume they can't do. The key is you have to own the land with it. It's got to all be attached together. Some stipulations there, but it can be done. The key is with the land. And then lastly, new construction. A lot of folks get told, hey, no, we can't do VA loan construction because a lot of lenders won't do new build VA loan constructions. Now, here's the deal. You can use a VA loan on a home that a builder's building, like a regular development, and you can do the permanent financing with a VA loan. Not a problem. That's how a lot of new builds are done. That works out really well. But you can also use a VA loan. If let's say you found your plot of land, you have your builder and you wanna build it from the ground up. For example, we can do those one-time closed construction loans with a VA loan. It can be done. It's very rare and there's few lenders that'll do it, but it can be done. So know that new construction can work even from ground up, just a little bit different process in that scenario. Now, what can a VA loan not be used for? Can't be used for commercial property. Can't be used for raw land or undeveloped lots that you wanna to try to buy. And lastly, like I hit on, investment homes. You can't buy a property and not intend on living there. But like I mentioned, you can buy a duplex, triplex, quad, and yes, happen to have people renting from you, but you're also living there at the property as well. Now, one of the big benefits of a VA loan is the ability to do a streamlined refinance. Now, the term for that is the VA Interest Rate Reduction Refinance Loan. And I like to say it's called Earl, so it's like your favorite Uncle Earl. And it's pretty incredible. So we're gonna talk about here in a minute a scenario of a recent comparison between a VA loan and a conventional loan. And what I like to tell folks is that even if the two loan types get close together at the time of purchase, so let's say you're buying the home and oh man, hey, the interest rates are pretty close on conventional versus VA, which is rare, but in certain circumstances it can, and I'll hit on that. But let's say interest rates are pretty similar, the cost of bringing cash to close are pretty similar. All terms are pretty darn similar at purchase. Why would I even choose a VA loan then? Especially for some reason they just don't like VA loans or whatnot. Well, it's because of this. Streamline refinance for a VA loan is incredible. The interest rate reduction refinance loan, EARL, allows you to reduce your rate very easily on a VA loan. If we can reduce your rate by at least half a percent or more, and it's been 210 days since your first payment, then you can do this streamlined refi. Here's the kicker, there's no appraisal. There's no income verification, which is honestly just incredible. There's no equity requirements, which is why conventional ones usually gotta do that appraisal in the first place, so there's no equity requirement in the home. And then there's also no credit score. We still check credit score because we gotta make sure that you've at least made your payments. You can't miss your payments, that's a key. But there's really no credit score requirement on doing a streamlined refinance with a VA loan. It's absolutely incredible. Whereas on a conventional loan, you're restricted by all of those. The big one, of course, being that appraisal and obviously income, but the appraisal, because on a conventional refi, you gotta make sure there's equity in the home. And here's the deal I like to say, the VA Earl, that streamlined refinance ability, it's kind of like your Armageddon button, especially for guys who are active duty and transitioning out of the military. Let's say you did happen to lose your job after you had bought that home a couple of years ago when you transitioned out. Well, good news is if rates happen to drop, you can still do a refinance. If you had a conventional loan, that'd be really tough, but you can still do it with a VA loan. Let's pull it back to the Great Recession, time when I grew up and started working in real estate. If all of a sudden market blows up and you're actually underwater on your home, let's say that they value the home on an appraisal, they had a value at 500,000, but you owe 600,000, 
There's no way you're doing a regular appraisal in most all circumstances. But with a VA loan, the incredible thing is you can still do that streamlined refinance because there's no appraisal and really no equity acquirement, which is incredible. So know that that's like the secret weapon of a VA loan. If all things are equal at purchase, to me personally, the ability of doing that streamlined refinance is what pushes a VA loan over the edge. And it's very incredible. For our clients, we make sure we track that because military, that's our bulk clientele. We do VA and conventional loans. That's the bulk of it. So we track the ability to do these refinances really well. You get a call from us six to seven months after you close to tell you, hey, I like to say it's a good call either way. Hey, either rates have gone up and aren't you happy that you're locked in at your past rate? Yeah, I am. Good deal. Or I'm calling and saying, hey, good news. We can save you a couple hundred bucks a month. Do you want to do it? And we go through what it looks like, what cost could be, and make it happen. Very incredible with a VA loan, Streamline Refinance, VA Earl. Now, one of the caveats that we have it as a little asterisk is that you can't pull out cash on doing a Streamline Refinance, a VA Earl. That would be a VA cash out. And in that scenario, you do have an appraisal. It becomes like a regular loan. You do have to document a lot more. It's a different process. But if you're just trying to reduce your rate and make sure you save money each month, there's no need for an appraisal, income document verification, and credit work. Pretty powerful. Now, let's compare a scenario where we look at the conventional loan versus a VA loan. When we pull up an example of a $500,000 home and we look at the difference in the two loans, we usually see anywhere between a quarter and just over a percent difference in interest rate on a VA loan versus conventional. In the scenario that we have, the VA loan is about 0.875 lower than a conventional loan. So not the highest, but also not the lowest at the same time. A very good reduction. But you look at this example on a $500,000 home and you pull down how much you save. The deal is on a VA loan, even though you're putting $0 down, 0% down, if you so choose, your monthly payment is still less than if you did a conventional loan where you put 5% down. Why? It's because that interest rate's significantly lower. And because even though you're putting less than 20% down, you don't have private mortgage insurance on a VA loan. Whereas a conventional loan, you have private mortgage insurance. So if you see our example that we have, the total it sums up over just a 10 year period that you save by going with a VA loan versus conventional, it's about $86,000. Big savings over a 10 year period on a half million dollar home. Now here's the thing, we get the opportunity to work for a lot of financial advisors and they point out, Evan, if you took that money and you compounded and invested it, it'd be so much more. They're right. So really we should say, hey, it's $100,000, $200,000 difference, but just by a basic numerical example, in the scenarios that we've run, just ran this recently for a client, it was an $86,000 difference over the first 10 years. Pretty wild. Now, here's the thing though. I mentioned it kind of throughout this. There's a lot of folks that'll say VA loans, best things since sliced bread. About 85% of the time, I'd say, the VA loan ends up being the best product to use. But there's still a couple of times where it might not be. And that's why it's important to work with a lender who's glad and proud to compare VA versus conventional or other loan types when necessary. Where we see sometimes a conventional loan get really competitive with a VA loan is if you're putting at least 20 to 25% down or more, you have a credit score that is 780 plus, because that's now with the new government adjustments on buying conventional loans, that's where you start getting the best rates on conventional, 780 plus, and you're subject to the VA funding fee, meaning you're not getting it waived. You don't have VA disability compensation that helps get it waived. In those scenarios, sometimes a conventional loan can be really comparable to a VA loan. Sometimes we see it where the rates are really close or we see it where the closing costs are less. Then you just gotta decide, hey, is it worthwhile or not? But in those scenarios, when you're putting more than 20, 25% down, you have a really high credit score of 780 plus and you're subject to a VA funding fee. That's when the conventional loan can be really competitive with the VA. But then as I just hinted on with the streamlines, if they're equal, you really got to think in the background, hey, what's that ability for me to use the VA streamlined refi to that Earl? It's pretty incredible. But there are those scenarios. That's why, again, work with someone who's happy to compare those. So now as we're rounding it out, we're going to talk about who qualifies. We obviously just talked about the incredible benefits of a VA loan and what it can do for you and kind of comparing it to some other scenarios. Who qualifies? Well, here's the deal. The VA tasks every lender with evaluating the risk of making a VA loan. So as we hinted out in the start, what that really means is that every lender is going to kind of have all their own requirements. So when we say who qualifies, kind of depends. And so we like to say there's thousands of versions of the VA loan out there. We get told by folks, hey, I can't do the VA loan. Well, why is that? Well, because it's a brand new build from the ground up. I'm like, well, that lender doesn't do that. So they denied you a VA loan for that sake, but other ones can. Big ones that we also see, credit score. 
hey, I got an ID, I can't do a VA loan. Why is that? Well, I got a 660 credit score. Some lenders will only work with credit scores that are above 660 or above 700, throwing out a lot of people. In reality, VA loan doesn't give a whole lot of guidance on credit scores. We can go down to 580. Could go lower, but we usually see 580 kind of being that lowest point. So it's really important to know, again, it's lender dependent for a lot of these things. Gift funds. Can I use the gift that my dad and my parents want to give me or whoever else? Well, depends on the lender. So you want to pay attention to that. And one of the last ones is income that we often see. Income's a little unique on VA loans. It's important to understand that when a lender's working with you, there's certain income types with military, VA disability, your BAS, your BAH, if you're active duty, that get treated a little bit differently. So it's important to work with a lender who knows how to treat those things. And it's a good way of treating it. Because those are tax-free, we get to gross those up because loan applications are done on pre-tax dollars, not post-tax dollars. And because a lot of military pays are tax exempt, we need to make that adjustment. If your lender doesn't understand that, then you could technically be underqualifying for a loan. And that could knock you out of the park for a home that you're wanting. Something to understand well is that every lender treats it differently. So who qualifies differs by lender. So how do we actually win a home with a VA loan? That's what this is all about. How do we go out there and get the home that we want? The key is work with the lender who gets it. Having someone who understands how to utilize a VA loan, and obviously this is where I'd say, I love it. Evan Kaufman, working with VBAT Home Loans, it's what we'd love you to use. But there's a lot of good folks out there who understand it as well. But we're a small subset of the mortgage loan originator world out there. So no one working with someone who gets it is the most important thing on getting the deal done. As I always like to say, especially for the real estate agents we get to work for, we want to help you win, close, and list more deals. And understanding the VA loan really well is what's going to help you do that. So rounding all this out again, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or a text. Shoot an email to loans at weVet.com or evan at weVet.com. Either one. We really hope this information helps you enable, empower, and go out there and win a home with the VA loan. Take care. Yeah.